was a really fun one just to start the month off with. I had a pretty decent idea of what I wanted in my head, and uh, the end result is definitely a long way from that. I think I might revisit my uh, November projects this year. I think I might redo them afterwards and kind of use this period as a bit more of a sort of pre viz R&D thing and try and turn this into one big project that I can get some actual content out of on the other side, like maybe a short film or just something like a suite of content from this month. I relied pretty heavily on nodes from my toolkit, so you'll kind of see me using a lot of these brick walls, and these are just the, the straight walls for the most part. These save a whole load of time if you ever need to do bricks, because these have an offset per row, automatically like 50% brick offset, and I use them for the slates as well, just because the slates have that same offset. And uh, doing things like windows, I just used a grid. And in my toolkit as well, there's a node which basically converts stuff into curves and then does curve to mesh. So I do a lot of stuff like that. But most of it is all just instancing, translating things, distributing points and instancing again. It's all kind of the same process on repeat. And this is what you always find with proceduralism. You can build up a very daunting tree when you look back at it at the end, but ultimately the actual processes are not that complex. So what I went and did was to make my life a bit easier I made a wall module, a section of the wall, and I made the porch module. Now I could have actually done these in the main tree, my original intention was to make several different variations which is why I did them separately because then I could have used the collection info node to pick instances, although we did actually find an alternative method to doing that, entirely keeping it inside the node tree, so that was nice. But what I did was I, rather than creating a whole wall section for the porch, I basically just created a part that would sit in front of the window and cover the window, thereby creating this kind of porch structure on the same wall. And it just meant that I didn't need to do any additional masking for the wall. I could just put the same window section everywhere and then select one part to put the porch on. And then there was a lot of chat. <laughs> the stream recording that I've done to the time lapse, I cut down to like four, just over four hours, just by removing all of the kind of conversation and going off on tangents and trying things on the stream. So if you do like that kind of more laid back freestyle stream, it's just a bit more conversational. Be sure to jump in some of the streams this month. One of the benefits of doing these bigger projects as well is that you do find bugs. Like it's a really great way to stress test the system. Something that is really important with this project and I didn't do it last year and I should have done and I kind of suffered for it was not planning enough. So this year I'm trying really hard to make sure that I am planning all of the content in advance. And it means that later down the line, if I'm not feeling so inspired after like the 20th, Maybe I'm not quite, I'm well, hopefully not burnt out, but certainly getting towards being a bit more fatigued. I have something to fall back on in case I can't come up with ideas on the spot. And last year I really struggled with basically burning out and having no ideas, but still forcing myself through. So this year I've kind of, I'm using that as my strategy to plan ahead and turn this into a larger project where everything is kind of interconnected within the same universe, same world, same town almost. So what you are occasionally seeing jump into the view. I know we're skipping through very quickly here, but you can see that I've basically taken all of my wall sections, built a wall, built a porch, built a roof, flipped everything around to make the other side, and I've put in like planes for the floor, and I've done vertical walls for the, the profile of the building. But I've also taken these boolean cuts out, and these aren't actually boolean cuts. I basically just instanced a bunch of icospheres, random size and scaling on the walls, and then I deleted the geometry that was inside them. So it's not a boolean, I was actually using the raycast to do that. And then you're also seeing me do this kind of bend. So the whole idea of this was it's a kind of surrealist Christopher Nolan style building bend as it kind of comes up and around. And this was inspired really by the, the audio. So I, if I'm ever using audio on a project, I'll do the audio first. Or you know, you'll come up with a bit of a storyboard in your head or on paper and then do the audio because if you make something and then it's like, oh, I can't even find the audio for that, or the pacing doesn't actually work, audio is 90% of an experience. You've got to make sure that your audio lands if you're going to use it. So I would recommend if you do use audio, work out what you're doing with it really, really early. So in this case, I'm kind of designing it around the audio, the length and the pacing of ultimately the animation that I'll do at the end. 
I knew that I had rubble and I knew I had creaking and I knew I had like rain and water and things like this. So being able to rip the building up out of the ground, I knew I had the sounds to be able to do that. And so I was able to pursue that with some confidence. I did have a little bit of trouble later on with getting rubble to fall out reliably. I do need to find a better way of doing it. And I think actually just translating the instances rather than trying to make them move along curves where the curves are changing length, my instances were just jumping around way too much. Ultimately, I decided not to do too much with materials. I did start playing with some textures, some procedural textures, but I, I just thought in the end, you know what, let's just go with colors for now, placeholder colors. My goal for this month is not to make amazing, beautiful works of art. It's essentially an R&D project, like how far can I push geometry nodes and search up before they break? How far can I push myself and my own procedural workflow before that falls down? So I'm taking a step back from shaders this month and I'm just gonna be working on procedural things and trying to make novel systems that do interesting and hopefully beautiful things. I have linked the full live stream down below. So if you do want to have a look at the full seven hour version, be my guest. And I will catch you in the next one.